Jamie with Color Valley Cooks, and I'm going to show you how my mama makes dressing. Look at this. It's, it's fluffy and delicious. No hockey puck dressing at your house if you make mama's recipe. Perfect amount of spices. Got pieces of chicken in it. It is so good. You're going to love it. Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Color Valley Cooks. I'm going to get y'all ready for Thanksgiving, show y'all how my mama made our dressing. We call it chicken and dressing because we put chicken in it. So let's get started. And this is in our volume one cookbook. Now I will say when I make chicken and dressing, I like to put the raw onion and celery in my dressing because it cooks for so long in the oven. Um, when I do potato salad, I saute it. I do not put green peppers in my dressing. I know many of you do. If you want to do that, I would suggest that you do saute the green peppers so that they don't overpower the taste of the dressing. Okay, so we're just going to go straight down the cookbook and start throwing everything in the bowl that it says to. It says um, three quarters of the cornbread that we cooked goes in first. So this is our cornbread. It was a recipe and a half. So you just take out, take out about a quarter part of your uh, cornbread. When you cook it the way I told you to, it's going to be light. I like for it to be cooked in a 13 by 9. One of the reasons we cook that much is so that we can put it in a 13 by 9 and still have uh, it cover the bottom of it good. Otherwise, it wouldn't cover the bottom good. So we're just going to crumble this up in our bowl and cook your cornbread light at 350 degrees. Okay, we're going to leave three quarters in the bowl and one quarter of cornbread on the pan. So we can go ahead and set that out of our way. All right, we're going to put in our um, onion and our celery that we've got chopped up on the chopping block. Okay, the recipe calls for four pieces of loaf bread. And these are large pieces, so I actually pulled out a few. Um, I think these are three, but they're really tall and nice and fluffy. So this will be plenty. You add the bread to the dressing because it does help it to fluff up and be light. Um, lots of times when you eat somebody's dressing, it's real thick and dense, especially once it gets cold and it's hard to get out of the pan. And uh, you can cut it with a knife. And I prefer my dressing to not be that way. I want it to be fluffy and light and delicious, okay? So that's one of the reasons I add the bread to the recipe. Lord, I hope our bowl's big enough. All right, I'm gonna put about three quarters of a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. My favorite poultry seasoning by far is McCormick. Poultry seasoning's main ingredient is sage. I just like the blend of poultry seasoning better than just plain sage in my dressing. We're gonna put in a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of milk. That's two cups of milk. This is another thing that makes my dressing really good. Most people don't put it in there. Um, and I am going to add chicken broth to this big measuring cup. And this is the broth that we used to boil our chicken in. I'm going to go ahead and put in um, four cups of broth. So you're going to have extra broth from boiling your chicken. Okay, now I like to use a Nora bouillon. You could use better, better than bouillon or granules, but this needs to be really hot when you add it to it and then we're gonna whisk it up before we put it in our dressing. And right now my broth is still really warm. So we are just gonna whisk this a little bit. And while that bouillon sits in there and gets just a little bit softer, we'll go ahead and chop up two boiled eggs into our dressing. This is my favorite egg slicer. It's a Pampered Chef. And I've had quite a few in my days, and this one is just my, by far my fave. All right, there's our eggs. You're going to use two raw eggs in our dressing. One. 
to. A lot of people are like, why do you do that? Well, when you make cornbread, you add an egg so that it, so that it um, holds together and binds and, and fluffs up. That's another thing that makes my dressing fluffy. Um, you want it to fluff up and be fluffy and good. So that's why you add the raw egg. Now we're gonna put in a can of cream of chicken. And we're just gonna go down the list to make sure we haven't forgot anything. I always do that, okay? So we've got uh, the cornbread in there, the cream of chicken soup. We got loaf bread, we got boiled eggs, we got chopped onion, chopped celery, teaspoon, uh, the salt, the pepper, the poultry seasoning, the chicken broth, um, the bouillon, two cups of milk, and two raw eggs. All I've got left to do is mix this up and throw it in there. Then we're gonna mix the dressing up really, really well. And then after we do that, we're gonna add a little bit of real chicken to it. And that's why I call mine chicken and dressing. And this is the biggest bowl I own. Mama used to always mix it up inside of a big boiler. So I'm gonna get a spoon because that broth is hot. And I'll start mixing this up. Now you wanna mix it up good because that raw egg's in there. So, you know, beat it a little bit. Now you're gonna see that my dressing is kind of runny. That's the way you want it. Because it's going to cook and it's gonna fluff up just like cornbread does, okay? Um, so you don't want it to be thick when you put it in your serving dish. And see the pieces of uh, bread in there is gonna fluff it up as well. So make sure you get that egg distributed through there good so that it will be, oh, it's gonna be so good. It smells good already. And these amount of spices to me is just perfect for dressing. And of course you can add more if you like a real sagey dressing. Um, by all means, you know, add extra in there. If you like bell pepper, put it in there. Some people like to put bacon grease in it. You do what you wanna do. But this is old fashioned Southern dressing. It is the way that my mama made it. My grandmother's made it, except for my Granny Benefield. She used biscuits, and I have her recipe on YouTube as well. And um, she didn't put cream of chicken soup in hers, so if you frown on that and you want the old-fashioned kind, then watch Granny's dressing recipe made with biscuits. It's on YouTube as well for y'all to look at and learn from. Now we're gonna add the chicken, but even Chris's family made dressing the way that I do. So it's a very traditional Southern uh, way to make it. Now I have taken the chicken that we boiled and I have cut, I have taken it and I've taken the meat off the chicken, okay? Now one of the breast meats or part of the breast you need to keep in hunks to decorate the top of your dressing with, okay? The rest you're going to put in the dressing. And one I left on just so y'all could watch me pick off some of the chicken to kind of just see what I do. I kind of separate it with my fingers as I'm putting it in the dressing. All right, so that's all the chicken. So we're just gonna mix that up. Don't that look good already? That should have been enough liquid. Yeah, it's close, yeah. All right, let's get it in the pan. This is an old dressing pan, can you tell? Does that look like your granny's dressing pan or what? You want it to be deep, you want your dressing to be deep enough that it's not, you know, that it's good. You, I like it at least, you know, that deep. I don't like dressing that's made real skinny like that. A lot of people make it that way, but my mama always made it deeper. Takes it longer to cook. Now I'm gonna use my hand because I'm gonna show you something. When you make dressing and you pour it out in the pan and you pat it, it should get solid on the top and look like liquidy almost on the top. If you use my amounts for the milk and the broth, it's gonna be the right amount of liquid so that your dressing comes out nice and fluffy and delicious. Now we're gonna take our chicken and we're gonna stick it down in the dressing. That way when somebody gets a 
a spoonful of dressing that can have about a chicken too. So we bake our dressing at 375 degrees till it's set. Now I'm gonna say this because this is a big deal. Make sure your dressing is done in the middle. It's gonna get done all the way around the edges way before it gets done in the middle. Make sure that when you're cooking chicken and dressing, you allocate two hours before time to eat, just with it in the oven. It's not gonna take two hours, but it's according to how thick you make it, it's gonna take it at least sometimes an hour and a half. So don't be pulling out your dressing, making everybody wait on the dressing, okay? I gotta rinse off my hands and we're gonna get it in the oven. So when it gets done, it should be solid all the way across the top like cornbread looks. So if it looks like it's sunken in in the middle or it still jiggles when you shake it, then it's not done. Hey y'all, it's Tammy. Our dressing's ready to get out of the oven. Now I will say this. One way to know your dressing is done so for one, it gets brown. For another, it starts looking cracked. See how it looks kind of cracked looking? And it needs to look that way in the middle too. If it's light and it doesn't look like there's any cracks through the middle, then you need to cook it some more, okay? So we're gonna put this over here because we're gonna serve it up in just a minute. We're gonna start some giblet gravy. We're gonna put some gravy in this gravy boat. And let's tip us out some. Give it a taste. Great thing about doing chicken and dressing is it's a meal in itself. And um, you already got the chicken in there, your dressing's in there. So I made green beans and I made us a couple of deviled eggs and that's a supper for us tonight. See how fluffy this dressing is? It's just real fluffy. And that's how we like it in my family. I'm saving room for my eggs. I'm going to show y'all a couple of deviled eggs with it. So we're going to pour a little bit of the giblet gravy over the top of it. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of deviled eggs on this. And I'm gonna taste it for you guys. Okay, let's give it a taste. Just like mama's, plenty of salt. Plenty of sage to me. To me, it's perfect. I don't like for dressing to taste too sagey because then you can't taste what else is in the dressing. To me, this is the perfect blend. I hope you try this Thanksgiving. Make sure you got some deviled eggs to go with it. Make sure you got some cranberry sauce, some green beans, some sweet potato souffle and all those good things. Don't forget Mmm, I had to get a bite. My volume one cookbook has the deviled eggs. It has the chicken and dressing. It has the grainy green beans, the sweet potato souffle, a lot of different pies. It has a lot of stuff in it packed full for Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like Mama did. Okay, we are going to go buy my recipe and my volume one cookbook i did measure out everything for y'all and if you make it it should turn out just right and it tells you right here with the fryer chicken you're going to put in a half stick of margarine half teaspoon of salt quarter teaspoon of pepper with a nor chicken bouillon all right this part you don't video all right after you lift your chicken up out of your broth, you're just going to put your broth in a couple of jars and that way it's easy to measure 
and we're just going to pour our good broth into here and this is exactly what we poured it cooked our chicken in okay all right when you make chicken and dressing you need to boil a few eggs and if you got to make deviled eggs just go ahead and boil a lot but today i'm just doing my dressing because i like to make it early so i'm going to place a couple of boiled eggs as all the recipe calls for but I'm gonna go ahead and boil a couple of more uh, just for supper tonight while I'm at it so you place your eggs in boiling water cover them and cook them for about 12 minutes but make sure they're boiling before you turn the timer on after your eggs boil run them cold water on them and then they can pe they peel really easy um, when you do them that way And then just set them over um, wherever you're going to be working for your dressing. Peel real easy. All right, we're going to do a recipe and a half of cornbread. So we are going to be using um, three cups of cornmeal. We are going to start out with three cups of cornmeal, y'all, because you make a recipe and a half. You can use the recipe on the side of the White Lily uh, buttermilk cornbread bag or Martha White or whatever you got but I do use cornmeal mix um, so we've got that three cups in there now we are going to add I'm gonna put in uh, two raw eggs now we're going to use I'm gonna use a half a cup of oil in this and we'll start out with a cup and a half of whole buttermilk. I like to buy whole buttermilk, y'all. Now, when you make dressing, cornbread for dressing, you don't want to put any sugar in it, for sure. And you also um, want it to be light in color. So you're going to set your temperature of the oven to 350 degrees, uh, which is different than, you know, what you normally do for cornbread. And I'm also going to bake this in a 13 by 9 pan because I don't want a crunchy dark crust for my uh, chicken and dressing. Mama always said that it didn't taste as good if you let it get dark. So I'm listening to Mama and that's what I do. 